Last story of the day, there's an old saying that the only constant is change. And our next guest, I think, would certainly agree with that statement, I, I, I would think. Kelly Graves is the CEO of Internal Business Solutions, a consultancy that helps organizations meet and overcome their biggest challenges. He uses his training in psychology to improve his clients' human communications and their processes, the processes that they use to improve those human communications. So his latest article is titled, you can see it right there, it's titled, Seven Steps to Better Performance, and it ran in Wednesday's issue of Quality Digest Daily. And in the piece, Kelly really tackles the, the question of, of motivation. He specifically tackles how leaders can help coach employees to motivate themselves. And, and this is a really important issue, I think, because many times what happens is, especially in, in periods of, of transition and, and periods when, when things aren't going really as well as you want, you need, as a manager, as a leader, I think you need to be able to support your team and, and give them the information that they need. And, and it's not always so easy. You know, you think it'd be easy, but it's not really always that easy. So now, to chat with us about this topic, we're very pleased now to welcome Kelly Graves back to the show. So, Kelly. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you. It's great to be back. How are you? I've been doing really well. Thank good, you. Good, good, good. Well, you know, you say in your piece, and this is, I, I thought this was really interesting. You, you start off in your piece in the first paragraph and you say, I can't motivate you and you can't motivate me, which I, I, I kind of feel is probably true. But given that, okay, given the idea that you really can't motivate someone that well, how do leaders motivate people to, I guess, motivate themselves? Okay. Well, you have to start from within. Yeah. Okay, so you were talking earlier about Maxine and her article. And so it really stems from that. You have to get inside the client's head. So ask them. Mm -hmm. um, motivation, you know, if I go up and do a rah-rah, that's great, but it's not going to last at all. Mm -hmm. However, if I uh, ask you, what would you like? What do you need? Involve you in the, in the process of building a better product, a better service, what can we do? Um, that's what's really required. And if you sit down and talk with an employee and say, I want you to give me feedback, yeah. and they don't, you have a trust problem. Mm -hmm. So you have to get the trust problem. So in my article, I spoke about that where um, went into an organization that we were shutting down and they were merging. And so the first thing that I had to do was just let everyone vent and scream and yell and say, this is so wrong, and just listen before we could ever say, now what are we gonna do to solve it, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, a lot of leaders, bosses, wanna tell people what to do instead of saying, what do you want to do? What should we do? How do we fix this problem? And it's not a one size fits all, right? I mean, what happens no. many times is I think that leaders uh, many times assume that they have all the answers. So they say, well, you know, they, they, they'll kind of listen to what the rank and file are saying, but really they right. say, okay, well, I know how to handle this problem and this is the way we handle this problem and they're gonna impose mm -hmm. a solution on it. But what you're saying, I think, is that the one size fits all top down approach it just isn't the way to go about it. Psychologically, it doesn't at all. Yeah. Um, it's very archaic. Um, in fact, I'm amazed at how far our technology has grown in the last hundred years and how um, uh, terrible that our, the way we manage people. I mean, it's, it's incompetence mm -hmm. because people don't understand the psychology of just how people react. And so even if a leader or manager knows what to do and says, Okay, team of 12, I want you to do X, Y, Z. He or she would be much better off, even if he or she has the answer, to say, this is our problem, what do you suggest? Mm -hmm. Now, it's gonna take an extra 15 minutes, but they're gonna work through it, it's gonna be, they're gonna solve that problem, they're gonna have the buy-in, and they're gonna be off and running. Versus, if I tell them what to do, you'll try to shove it down their throat for seven years and you won't make it. They well, won't buy into it. I mean, it. we're still, I mean, it sounds like what you're saying is we're still kind of locked in the old traditional command and control uh, uh, methods. And it's, it, I mean, it's still after Deming and all these years, it seems like we still are having problems breaking free of that? Most definitely. In fact, that's what, you know, Maxine's article was very good in explaining this is what we need to do in um, manufacturing. But I can tell you for a fact that in 10 to 20%, you know, Pareto principle, 80, 20, they do that. 
but I can tell you in the 80 and the other 80%, they don't do it. In fact, I've had a CEO tell me, we don't have time to do it right, mm -hmm. okay? We have to get it done fast. Now, um, and also there's this challenge between what the quality manager wants to do and what the production manager wants to do. Yeah. And we've got to get those people on the same page, so. Well, yeah, let, let's, let's get to that because okay. that's a really good thing. You, you started talking about this earlier where, where you have this example of, you, you know, you walked into a company that was undergoing a merger right. and, and, and it was a very turbulent time in the, in the organization and, and there was a lot of people, as you mentioned, who were, who were unsure about the, their future in, in, the, in the company and their future just as employees. Mm -hmm. um, but yet, there was this imperative, get product out the door, we got to meet orders, we got to keep going. So right. how do you keep people focused on the big picture which quite frankly, may not even apply to them in a few months. How do, you, how do you keep them focused on doing the job at the same time that their job might go away? Mm -hmm. It's a tough one, right? It is, and let's go back to honesty. Yeah. When we have that conversation, we're gonna say, this is what's happening. I'm a manager, I'm gonna get uh, terminated as well, or I can move to Texas, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, let's have the honest conversation about what we need to do in the next six months. Now, we need to still get product out. We need, we're gonna do some training. We're gonna help you transition. That's just a fact. And what I went back to before is that person is angry. So we have to let them be angry. We have to encourage the anger. We have to put them in small groups and say, okay, give it to us. And they will exhaust themselves. Now, once they're exhausted, they've been heard, they vented, now we can have a conversation because now in their head they're not thinking, I hate your guts, mm -hmm. okay? So, gang, this is what we have. You can either quit now or in six months, you know, you don't have a job, but what are we gonna do to, you know, go through the next six months together? Now, we're gonna help with, you know, training, we're gonna to try to set you up with other companies, we're gonna do everything we can, but this is reality. Right now. And I think when you start engaging people like that, remember, people wanna feel valued. That's, it's, you know, people think that, that money is the biggest motivator. No, it's not. It's, it's number five, value. I wanna feel valued. And when people feel valued, they will involve themselves. So involve your employees in the problem solving. And that's how we get people motivated. Remember, people are self-motivated. They're self, you know, people are um, motivated by self-interest. That's why we want to ask them questions instead of tell them. I, 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 I want to touch on a little something that you just said because I think this is also a mistake that a lot of companies make where they incorporate the word of what you just said, but not the spirit. So I mean, 100%. it's like, oh yeah, vent, yeah, tell us. And and so they sit there, and and so the employees go in, and I've seen this happen uh, at other organizations. So oh, this is great. So the employees come in and they vent. Mm -hmm. Now, in the in the in the the manager's mind or the CEO's mind, it's like, oh, this is great. They're getting it off their chest. I'm just going to sit here and listen and roll over me. Mm -hmm. And employees want to do more than vent. Right. They want to know that not only have they vented, but you heard what they were venting. Precisely. And, and, and I've seen that happen, where mm -hmm. it's you can't you have to incorporate the spirit of that. It's not just about letting them vent, which is important, but it's also actually listening to and perhaps acting on the things that they pointed out. Right. I mean, right. Uh, otherwise you lose that respect. Right. And there's a, there's a timing there, and that's why you need the objective person, just like editing an article. You need that objective person that knows how to um, uh, create that and how to move those people. So if in an organization like that, I might encourage them to vent uh, you know, a few times over the first couple of weeks. However, if it's somebody where we're already at a different space, I always say two minutes. If somebody comes to you and they're griping about X, Y, Z, give them two minutes. And after two minutes, great, now what are the solutions? Mm -hmm. Because in two minutes you vented, now we're just griping and complaining. It doesn't do us any good. Just, just okay. adding it on. Yeah, we'll just spiral. Yeah. We, we, we got okay. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. We, we hear you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in, it depends on the, the gravity of the situation on how much people vent, but you have to know how to coordinate um, those and the average CEO doesn't know how to coordinate those just like if you sent me in to do an audit on a company yeah I've had a few classes in college on accounting but 
there's no way that I could do an audit, okay? And people are under the assumption that, well, I know human nature, I read this book, and you know, we let them vent for a little bit, blah, 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 and now what are you gonna do? And if, if you don't know how to coordinate that, um, you're lost and the people will feel it instantly. So that's really the key, it's not just the venting, but now what are we gonna do? How are we gonna involve those people and say, let's solve this and this? And I use what I call acknowledge the obvious. You can only go as fast as the people go. So if you let them vent and you say, okay, let's try to solve it, and they're complaining about something else, you have to know when to either stop that or say, that's important, we'll talk about that later. Um, but you know, your body language, I can still see that there's something wrong. You're saying yes, but you're meaning something else. And we run into that all times in meetings where the leader says, let's do X, Y, and Z. And everyone's going, okay. And they walk out the door and they go, you know, that's a stupid idea, it's crazy. But you gotta do it because the boss says we do in that kind of an organization. In uh, successful organizations, the CEO should say, okay, let's have a discussion. For the next 15 minutes, there's no titles. There's no CEO, there's nothing. I wanna know the truth. So when we walk out that door, we've got the best solution. And at the end of that 15 minutes, yeah, I'm gonna make a decision. But right now, I wanna know everything. Give it to me straight. And when you, when you have those kinds of situations, you have a higher probability of success, whether you're on the shop floor or in the executive suite. Well, Kelly, you know, it's always a lot of information you give us, a lot of good practical practical stuff, and, and I think the people appreciate it out there. It's, it's uh, you know, you're one of our, uh, one of our well, most well-read columnists, I can tell you that, and, and uh, people really like what you do. So thanks for joining us again. We'll have you again on the show, uh, certainly you. your next column, uh, so you can look out for that uh, coming up here uh, probably in a couple of weeks or early in October. Uh,